NerdRotic.com. Welcome back to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com. And is the MCU going for woke? Well, indeed it is. And if you are a longtime comic book reader, this might feel like deja vu all over again with the female Thor. And the rumor is, from Bounding into Comics, that there might be a female lead in Thor 4. Now, file this strictly under rumor. But again, those of us who have read comics for a long time have just gone through this a couple short years ago when Jane Foster took over the Thor mantle. That is not a mantle, it is somebody's name. As Comics Division put it in my live stream last night correctly, it would be like if Mrs. Nerdrotic wanted to become me. But she wouldn't want to take that pay cut. Now, MCU fans, I will hear your cries of dissent. I heard them prior to Captain Marvel. I've heard them after Captain Marvel, which is still the very best evidence that the MCU is going woke. But there's lots of little hints here and there. And while this is a rumor, and this certainly... I don't, I don't know. If they still have Chris Hemsworth around, I would think they would still use him personally. But if they don't have him, I can definitely see them going in this direction. We also have hints of Kate Bishop showing up. And we also have everything that happened in Marvel Comics. And that's what a lot of us have been doing videos on for some years now. Much, Some of them longer than me, for sure. That this is the direction the MCU is going. I believe Marvel Comics was simply a proving ground. And although that completely failed, that's not going to stop them because they don't think comic fans are important anymore. Clearly, look at Captain Marvel. Now, Captain Marvel making a billion dollars is certainly the reason why they're going to go ahead. And we all know, well, most of us know here, that that's not why it made a billion dollars. It didn't make a billion dollars because of its agenda or Brie Larson. It made a billion dollars because of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. But the money crunchers are going to look at that movie by itself and say, hey, this agenda stuff sells and, well, who can argue with them? So it looks like that's the direction we're going to go. And, well, that's going to help a lot of YouTubers because that's going to get a lot of material out of us for a lot of years. But it is my hope which is not a strategy, that they do not do this. I do not want them to go in this direction. The MCU has been a beacon, an oasis, away from this crap for so long, but we've also seen hints within the MCU. Spider-Man Homecoming had a little bit of SJW stuff in it. The Wasp and Ant-Man, yes, it was the Wasp and Ant-Man, certainly was a female-led movie. Although Paul Rudd was great in it, it certainly was Evangeline Lilly's movie. Just look at this poster. And I like Evangeline Lilly, and I like her as Wasp. I just don't think she is leading character material. Now, I talked about this on my live stream last night with Comics Division. I will link it in the description. We go into it in further detail, and you can also see what the chat thinks, which is always funny and interesting. Bounding in the comics, rumor, Thor 4 could feature female lead by the future Pulitzer Prize winning John F. Trent from April 19, 2019. A new rumor indicates that Thor 4 could feature a female lead. The rumor from Cosmic Book News, another good site, points to an interview with the Los Angeles Times. Thor Ragnarok actress Tessa Thompson noted she believes a pitch for a Thor film has been made. I heard the pitch has happened for another Thor film. I don't know how real the intel is, but I hear that the pitch has happened. I think the idea is Taka Watiti, who directed Ragnarok, would come back. She also discussed the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and how it will be more female-oriented when discussing a recent fan tweet showing Captain Marvel and Valkyrie together. OMG. It didn't even occur to me legitimately that it was necessarily a romantic thing, really. On Twitter, I know. I don't even know what happens in the canon in terms of those characters or if they ever intersect. But I just love the idea of more women Marvel characters getting to intersect. I just think it's so cool and it's time. And why not? There's so many compelling female characters inside of the MCU. At least she acknowledges that. And there's a lot of female characters in Marvel Comics. I know it sounds like such a weird idea that there was women in Marvel Comics prior to 2016, but there was. She added, and just selfishly, when I get to see those women in passing, they're all such cool women. So the idea of getting to spend time with them and hang out is so fun. I'm just excited that this new phase promises to have women and queer folks. And as Comics Division rightly pointed out in the live stream, Human beings do not talk like this outside of Hollywood. Hollywood is starting to have its own language. I live in San Francisco, and I don't hear anybody referring to themselves as queer folk. 
Back in 2017, in the lead-up to Thor Ragnarok's release, Kevin Feige indicated that he was open to the idea of a female Thor film. He spoke to Movies.com. We always look back to get those ideas, sometimes very specific storylines like Civil War, sometimes just nuggets, or characters like Planet Hulk. So anything that's happened in the comics, even a female Thor, become great potentials and the ideas from which future movies can be born. Tessa Thompson's Thor Ragnarok co-star Carl Urban. Oh no, no, Carl, don't. I think you're cool. You're dread. You're Billy the Butcher. Endorses the idea of a female Thor. I think it's time. I think it's well overdue. Absolutely. I'd love to see that movie. Why not? Obviously coming from a place of complete ignorance. It is not time for a female Thor. It wasn't time for a female Thor when it happened in the comics. And again, comics fans, I apologize. This one is mainly for the normies you're probably just sitting there going oh no not again and there are maybe hundreds of videos on this subject your boy zach douglas ernst englantine from i love comics just some guy just to name a few a female thor was introduced into marvel comics continuity in 2015 by jason aaron and russell dowderman the story revealed that jane foster was the new thor after she took up the hammer to prevent her impending death from cancer and there's a lot more to it than that but i'm not going to get to it here adding to the rumor is the current direction for the Marvel Cinematic Universe that Kevin Feige has stated it will take. Feige noted the Marvel Cinematic Universe would have more female-led films with Wasp and Ant-Man. And yes, I call it Wasp and Ant-Man. Look at the poster. And now with Captain Marvel and many movies to be announced in the near future. I'm anxious for the time where it's not a novelty that there is a female-led superhero movie. Um, it's not a novelty. Female-led superhero movies have actually been around for a while. I remember watching one in the 80s called Supergirl with Helen Slater, who was still my Supergirl. But it is the norm. And by the way, whose decision was that? It wasn't the audience's. And it is less a story of, oh, look, a female hero. Who's making it a story? Uh, I do believe it is you, Kevin, and you, Access Media, who are making it such a big deal. Calling Captain Marvel the first female lead in the MCU when, by all accounts, Scarlett Johansson was a lead in the Avengers and a much better character and and a much better actress, and a much more likable person. And it's more of a story. Oh, what's this about? Who's this character? I'm excited to see that. All things I didn't say about Captain Marvel. And I think we can get there. Well, certainly they think they have gotten there with Captain Marvel, and unfortunately, a billion dollars backs that up. But it'll be really interesting to see how a Captain Marvel sequel does when it's not surrounded by Avengers movies starring Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., and Chris Hemsworth, Karen Gillan, and Zoe Saldana. And it appears they will be introducing a number of those female characters on their Disney streaming service. There is a rumored Hawkeye series that is expected to see the torch passed from Jeremy Renner's Clint Barton to Kate Bishop, a character nobody cares about. A character that's only been good in one series, as far as I'm concerned, The Young Avengers. Hawkeye isn't the only rumored series. Another featuring Mark Ruffalo's Hulk is expected to introduce She-Hulk, a.k.a. Jennifer Walters, which is what I've wanted from the beginning. I actually did a podcast two or three years ago asking for them to bring in She-Hulk instead of Captain Marvel. Would you be interested in seeing a female-led Thor film? Absolutely not, but I would be interested in seeing a She-Hulk film. What do you make of the current direction of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? The MCU is indeed going for woke. Now, nobody has a problem with female characters. There are plenty of female characters that they could introduce into the MCU, but they are looking to replace male characters like Hawkeye, like Hulk, like Thor, when you could introduce the Invisible Woman. You could reintroduce Medusa. You could introduce the real Valkyrie, Moondragon, and Rogue, and all of those female X-Men. And that's where some of the strongest Marvel female characters are. How about a proper version of probably, arguably, the best female Marvel character, Storm? The closest thing Marvel has, in my opinion, to Wonder Woman. But when you have these female replacement characters, you can also insert a certain agenda. And that is the problem with the MCU going for woke. We don't want this to happen, but all the signs are there. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, hey, thanks for listening this long. Please go to nerdrotic.com for my live stream schedule. Everybody have a great day, and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness.
nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.